We do need replication. We have DAP HF. I'm really glad we have Emperor, which is the ongoing trial. Uh, I hope we reported relatively soon with empagliflozin. And if we get replication, if it's really clear that across you know, several drugs in the class, that will be very, very exciting uh, to see. And, it, you know, who knew? I mean, who knew that when we studied uh, uh, these newer drugs for uh, diabetes that we'd actually discover, you know, cardiovascular benefits we never anticipated. And, you know, I, just to you know, I hammer home the point, that's the whole point of doing outcome trials is you find out things you didn't expect you find out benefits and risks. And I just would make one more uh, broad comment. Everybody thought that the DPP4 inhibitors would have benefits. And here is a class of drugs, you know, uh, 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 Jaime, that's very expensive, you know, uh, costs as much as the STL2-2 inhibitors and have absolutely no benefits whatsoever. I mean, there's nothing other than lowering blood sugar. And yet they're very widely used, much more widely used than the SGLT2 inhibitors. And it's something that bothers me a lot. And it suggests that we're not doing a good job of talking to our colleagues about evidence-based medicine. Uh, I wanna come back to that, but if I could, could you, cause you brought it up, could you um, say a few words about uh, any differences or, or what you would expect differently from Emperor versus DAPA, if at all? Uh, you know, I first of all think that so far we haven't seen any real differences across the class. You know, the drugs work by the same mechanism. They have about the same blood sugar lowering effect. You know, the trial design will result in some differences in outcomes. You know, uh, you know, what's the mix of patients that you study? How advanced is their disease? Uh, how many of them are secondary versus primary prevention? But I think by and large, what we're likely to see is a, is a class effect, but we do need to see it in, in multiple drugs because we have seen in some other classes, for example, the GLP-1 agonists, you know, uh, lixacenatide didn't provide any benefits, whereas liraglutide did. And so I, I, I think we've got to really do this. And historically in medicine, We've always required that you show this for maybe a couple of drugs in the class before we say it's a class effect. And just to make sure we're capturing it, uh, I'll bring it back to you, uh, Nihar. Um, differentiation or implications of preserved versus reduced ejection fraction. Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a big point. Um, and 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 I agree with Steve that. You know, what we saw in DAP AHF, I, I hope, is what we see in the other trials that are being done. So the Emperor program with empagliflozin has sort of two studies un underneath it. There's actually a number of um, studies, but there's the Emperor Reduced, which has the systolic heart failure patients, and then Emperor Preserved, which has the preserved ejection fraction patients. I think the, the Reduced um, trial looks very similar to, to DAP AHF and at least everything that we have kind of heard about it. I do think that Emperor Preserved, um, if that sort of reports out the way, again, that we all hope it will, and to Steve's point, if, you know, if, if these drugs do have the kinds of effects that we all want on heart failure, and that extends not just to reduce DF patients, but to the preserved DF patients, I think that will be a very important stride forward um, for the field and for our patients, because again, that'll be the first real therapy um, that, that can improve outcomes and the care of those patients that, you know, represent about half the patients with heart failure are actually preserved ejection fraction. Um, and yet, you know, we have very little by way of therapy, dedicated therapies for them. And so I think we're all eagerly awaiting. And I think Steve's point about the need for replication and really making sure that the trials are done well and they are reported out in a timely way is critical for that. And, and I think um, if we get the same kind of data that we've seen thus far for reduced DF on the preserved DF, um, that will really be uh, an important step forward. I just so want to com comment, if I could, Neil, for a minute about the pharmacoeconomic implications here, because, you know, what you really want to be able to do, I mean, these drugs, let's face it, are not, not free. They're, they're, they're costly, is you want to see that you're affecting 
outcomes that have you know economic costs and that's why i'm so excited about the sglt2 inhibitors yes they lower blood sugar and they do so effectively but they have all these ancillary benefits you know reducing death reducing hospitalization or heart failure and so we're going to have to ask more of the diabetes drugs that we use you know you can give a drug uh, a sulfonylurea that's practically free it's so inexpensive but we don't see any benefit other than lowering blood sugar. And that may not be the, 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 the most cost-effective approach. If we have drugs that lower blood sugar equally well, but have but keep you out of the hospital, keep you from developing heart failure and keeping you from dying, then I think we've got to ask the payers to really value that and make it a little easier for us to prescribe these drugs.